beautiful. Folks, believe it or not, we're finishing the 26th letter today. This letter, speaking about how the divine wisdom is found in Klippa. And as we learned yesterday, we have a responsibility, hence an obligation, to disencumber the divine wisdom of God, which is his Torah teachings, in order to elucidate, excuse me, elucidate or um, to refine, to, well, by extracting that wisdom that is found in Klippa in a shell that's covering over it. And that's what our job is in general, as we've explained, is to disencumber the negative forces that are mixed together with positive and holy forces and to use that spark of divinity in a uh, uplifting and um, appropriate holy manner. And that's what comes in the material world, as we've explained. That's elsewhere the al explains elsewhere at great length. And here we're speaking about in the divine wisdom, the spark of uh, <coughs> Jewish teachings. So therefore, the main function of Torah study today is to seek out and elevate those sparks of holiness from the klipa, from that shell. And um, therefore, the laws of uh, valid, invalid, uh, permitted, prohibited, kosher, not kosher, and so on and so forth, then make up the bulk of Jewish studies. But that's until the Shechina emerges from the klipa, Klippas Neuge. Klippas Neuge is the admixture of good and evil. Because Klippas Neuge is what is giving um, vitality to the world. Most of this world is a mixture of good and evil. There are some things that are pure evil and some things that are pure holy. Putting on tefillin, giving tzedakah, charity, pure holiness. The act that is you know the intent also needs to be but just the very act itself their pure holiness um, doing harm to another is pure evil but those are the extremes most of the world is being vitalized in a manner of klipas now you got a mixture of good and evil so when <coughs> those sparks of klipas noiga will be extracted the good from the bad, from the evil, and be elevated to its holiness. And we will finish that job. That means that all evil will be dispensed with, will disperse. You know why? Why, why should that be? Well, again, if I go back to something, I'll tell you if it doesn't say over here, but I'm, I'm going to give... Further, further elucidation. If there's two forces, so then there's always two forces. Unless you, you know, beat up this force, then there'll always be another force there. But if there's only one force, and that's the force of God. And Kalipa gets its vitality from where? Not from the anti-God, but from God. But once the Kalipa has all been elevated to its source in God's holiness... In other words, we finish the Avedis Birum, the, the, uh, the divine service of refining this world, because everything has been elevated. Now you might say, well, how's that going to be possible? Well, we don't make the calculation on what it means to finish that work. And, and we just have to do the work, right? We have to do that work of, of that refinement. But when it is finished, that means all evil is dispersed. Because evil gets its vitality from Hashem's holiness, from the godly side. And, right, so God and His holiness gives vitality to Klippas Neiga. Klippas Neiga gives vitality to complete evil. But at once we've refined the world sufficiently and elevated the good that's in that Klippa, extracted and elevated to holiness, now there's no nurturing, no nourishment, no 
giving a vitality to the negativity of the world, and it disperses. That that's the that's the 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 um, the, the geography of it, and how it works in the spiritual realm. Um, therefore, we gotta continue doing mitzvahs and mitzvahs and. Because through that, with the physical world, it's studying Torah. Um, because through that, we are refining the world, ultimately elevating it, right? Until, again, Klippa will not have any, uh, any vitality. That's our job. So then the question becomes, well, we know that we're going to study Torah when, you know, when Mashiach comes. And of course, this means Mashiach. So what are we going to study Torah for? Well, there's a deeper element to the study of Torah. And that is not the refinement of klipa, but it is about creating a union in the divine. A marriage, so to speak. I mean, metaphorically speaking. A marriage between the male and female parts of the divine and bringing new divine light into this world. The truth is, in a sense, we do that now, but that's not the primary um, intent of Torah and mitzvahs today. It is, again, the refinement of this world. But once it has been refined, we are in the times of Mashiach, then we will study Torah. But it will be liyachid yichudim, in order to create a marriage, to create a union between the divine attributes above. That's what we're going to be doing. And um, this is what the Arizal explains, that we will accomplish this by the study of the inner dimension of the Torah, the esoteric dimension, like Tanya, like we're doing now, and the Zohar, of course, which is the topic of discussion over here. We will do that. Um, and through that teachings, then we will then perform the, the mitzvahs, 613 mitzvahs, because they will not be uh, dismissed with until much, much later on. Uh, but, you know, in, in the parts of the first part of Mashiach, for sure not. And uh, we'll fulfill the, with a mystical, lofty devotion, drawing down divine lights into this world. And we will then even have growth from level to level because we will... Uh, appreciate and understand and, and experience and see with our very eye the the divinity that we are drawing down into this world. And that is an exceedingly high level beyond even the world of Etzilus. Even beyond the world of Etzilus. So that's why um, the main study will be directed to the inner dimension and of course, I'm saying this parenthetically because the Alter Rebbe doesn't say it here, but other places is, you know, there's a law that if you want to eat, um, um, there's a law that um, to eat for Shabbos, you need to prepare on the eve of Shabbos. Shabbos is the times of Mashiach. And on the eve of Shabbos, is where we are right now, is the preparation for a day that's all Shabbos, a time that's all Shabbos, times of Mashiach. So we have the preparation. How, what are we preparing with? Of course, there are mitzvahs in general, but specifically with the learning of Tanya, other Hasidic teachings, and particularly Chabad teachings, that give a, um, a, a deeper fulfillment of... The, the Zohar and other mystical teachings. And then that is a, a preparation that when we cross over the threshold into Mashiach, it's not going to be such a drastic change. Because at least intellectually, not experiential, not experientially, but at least intellectually, we will um, understand that which is about to come. We don't experience it now. You know, it says, one of the things it says, when Mashiach will come, but we'll be going like this. We'll come, ah, ooh, ah, yeah. 
uh, we'll point with our fingers that which we're learning now in Tanya, and we understand in our mind's eye, but then we'll see it in our physical eye. And we'll say, oh, wow. And others, that I learned that idea. And now I'm experiencing that idea that we learn in the mystical inward dimension of Torah teachings. So this will be um, the primary engagement. Uh, what will be with those, uh, with the laws that we need to know, like the do's and the don'ts. So because God's presence is so palpable and so real, you know, you don't forget something. I think about it, folks. Uh, any experience that you ever had that was that made an indelible mark in your, uh, on your mind and in your heart, you don't forget it. Well, here we have it few and far between because the presence of God is not indelible for us at least. Righteous people, different story. Um, but in times of Mashiach, the presence of God is real. It makes an indelible mark. We won't forget. So we're going to learn one time the law of whatever it is. You ain't going to forget. You're not forgetting. It will be sufficient. Because in any case, as we've learned previously, it's an innate knowledge that we of Torah because Torah is divine. God's divine wisdom. God's divine wisdom is part of our divine soul. It is a makes a makeup and therefore that's the medrash uh, i'm saying this the alternative doesn't say this here but we've learned this previously um actually at the beginning of this letter that in utero the fetus is learning torah from an angel and what does that mean uh, and, and we're we learn it and we forget it all because we're hit over here on the top of the lip and when we come out and, and we forget it what does this mean you know uh, uh it means simply that Torah is an innate thing to the soul. It's taught to us in utero, meaning that it is a part of our DNA, of the Jewish soul's DNA. Therefore, when you're learning it, you're kind of relearning it. The problem is now, because it doesn't make an indelible mark on us, therefore we have to learn it, relearn it, relearn it. Times of Mashiach, it'll be sufficient one time. Now, the Altarim then says, this is true um, in, in, as a general principle. However, there is something called the Erevrav, the mixed multitude. What that means exactly is not so clear to me, at least. Um, it is those who are Jewish, but maybe don't include themselves to be part of Kalal Israel, a part of the Jewish people. Maybe they consider themselves just, you know, by a, a, a result of, of, of uh, you know, being born as a Jew and, you know, and nothing more. Um, uh, not, again, I'm not clear if exactly the parameter of it but it is in a reference to that element of people that they will have to learn this part of Torah that they, that in order to refine themselves. Because even though when Mashiach comes, evil is eradicated from the world, but there will be some kind of negative forces still in their soul that they need to subjugate. They will not be completely uh, dominion free of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. There will be some element that will still um, have some kind of um, force upon them. And therefore, they, um, yeah, meaning the Sitarach, Klippa, will still have some kind of cleaving that they will need to study these areas of Torah in order to subjugate the negative forces. Again, who that is, um, pray tell anybody that is learning Tanya on a daily basis is not included in this. And not just learning it, of course, if you're just learning it intellectually and not applying it in your personal life, so that's, you know, that's not called learning. It's a little more to learn and to 
uh, and to, to teach and to do. So, you know, now, but the rest of people, of they will, the Alta Rebbe says, possibly, before we mention that you're going to learn it once and that'll be sufficient, you know, whatever the laws are, and you won't forget. Now the Alta Rebbe says, it's even possible, and indeed probable, that, that, um, that we can know the fundamentals of the revealed law of Torah from the inner dimension which is indeed the way Abraham, Avram Avinu, and the patriarchs and matriarchs, how they also knew the mitzvahs in their time. They fulfilled the mitzvahs before they were given, but they did in a spiritual realm. They, uh, under, they, they had a connection to the spiritual realm of the divine. They, fo- they understood, were aware, and were connected to that divine realm. And from that divine realm, that can bring us from the inside to acting on the outside. You know, um, you could say that like two different ways of, um, uh, so to speak, self-help. You know, uh, fake it till you make it, act it and you'll be it, right? Here, here, it's the opposite. You are it on the inside, so then, of course, it's going to express itself on the outside. Now, in this day and age, it doesn't work, but in times of Mashiach, where there isn't a, where there isn't basically a, 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 um, a curtain or a separation between the inner me and my outer me, so being that I'll engage in Torah study on a level that's developing the inner soul, the inner me, it will reflect itself on the outside. And therefore, those things that I need to know on how to act will come kind of naturally as a um, byproduct. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> That's a, you know, what the Altered Ever says. Um, so therefore, not needing to occupy yourself in the laws of the do's and the don'ts. Now, the Alter Rebbe makes a, a, a clear distinction between the times of Mashiach and the sages that lived in the times of the Second Holy Temple, who were holy, righteous people, and who had their own, their own vineyards and their own um, soil that they tilled, so they were not dependent on the, um, the ignorant, and therefore needed to learn the laws in order to teach the laws to those who were ignorant, who were taking care of their produce, of their livelihood. No, they took care of it themselves. So then why did they learn those areas if they're great holy sages? It's because the world would then, as is now, even though it was the times of the holy temple, in the times of the holy temple, there's a presence of God, but it's still ex, it's still the world is not completely redeemed. So we still need, even in the times of the Holy Temple, to engage in Torah study of refinement. And therefore, most of their teachings was in that area, hence the Talmud. As a uh, you know, finalization or realization of those areas of teachings. But now, when we're on the threshold and Mashiach is coming, you know when? Today. This is it. Hayoim. Today. Uh, God willing. And um, so this is um, then the distinctions of the sages in terms of, of the second holy temple. But Mashiach is coming and therefore we will engage in our Torah studies we're learning now. Tomorrow. God willing. Final redemption is here. We'll continue learning, Tanya. But then you're going to go, oh, wow. You're going to not just understand it in your mind's eye and kind of, you know, kind of get it. (laughs) You will really get it. The above words of truth, the Alter Rebbe concludes this letter. It is possible to clearly understand that which the Zohar, uh, Rai Mehemet's section of the Zohar, 
uh, elucidates that this is what it means, a tree of good and evil, uh, meaning of klipa, which is the mainstay of this world, and that is what we need to engage in right now. And Vedaila uh, Mavin, and this will suffice for the discerning. Now, th- that's the end of the letter. In- interesting, the Rebbe said on several times that we've actually finished this wor- uh, the, the, the work of refinement, and all we need to do is open our eyes and to be able to see redemption on the, on the threshold, on the redemption here. Um, I think the, the Rebbe was trying to bring us to the to kind of live as if we're in the times of the Messianic era, where godliness is apparent. And then if we open up our eyes, we can see that in our lives, we can see it around us, and, uh, and to live that way, even though we're still, you know, in exile. Because when we will live that way, ultimately, uh, we will make it that way. And that's what the third Lubavitcher Rebbe told to a, one of his chassidim, uh, the Tzemach Tzedek, when he requested that he wanted to go and make Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael, to the Holy Land of Israel. And he said, Mach da Eretz Yisrael, make here Israel. What is it? Holy. It's a holy land, meaning the presence of God. So make here, through your thought, speech, and action, that living in such a manner, you can make here the holy land. And that's what we got to do, folks. In the meantime, before uh, Mashiach's coming, Hayoim today, that tomorrow's class is going to be, oh my gosh, something else, God willing. Okay, Crystal, Shalom from Australia. Silla from Texas. Uh, All right, folks, that's the story. A reminder, um, JLI course is coming up next week. I've sent out, uh, for those who want information, private message me. It's going to be an amazing course, Secrets of the Bible. I encourage everybody to join. Uh, There is a fee for it, but uh, in Canadian dollars. Um, But... Uh, we won't hold back anybody. Um, we can work things out, but um, at least reach out and let me know if you're interested. It's going to be something very, um, very special. Looking forward to that, and looking forward, God willing, for the continuation. Our Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kedushim in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have a wonderful day.